Welcome back to my latest career mode episode. I had a great uh, race last time out in Bahrain. Everything went to plan and we got the win on debut. Uh, this week we're heading to Sepang for the Malaysian Grand Prix. Looking at, at the points table, I've got a slim lead over Alonso. I'm on 10 points with Alonso on eight and Massa on six. And in the constructors, we're, we're two points behind Renault. I'll probably have to win most of the races for us to be a chance in the constructors because my teammate has got snow speed. Um, but I digress, let's get into practice. Welcome to Friday practice one here at the Malaysian Grand Prix. I'm joined in the commentary box by Martin Brundle. Good morning to you, Martin. Morning, James. It's great to be back at the Sepang International Circuit. I'm looking forward to seeing what the weekend has in store for us. What will we see from Max Verstappen this weekend? After last weekend's win, his confidence must be sky high. But this Malaysian circuit and the conditions are a totally different challenge. Ted's down in pit lane with some news for us. Morning, Ted. Good morning, viewers. Morning, James. Morning, Martin. I just wanted to touch on the oppressive conditions in store for this weekend. It's currently 36 degrees with a relative humidity of over 9,000%. So teams will be closely monitoring the cooling systems, making adjustments to ensure optimal engine temperatures throughout the race. I won't be surprised if we see some issue for the teams during the race on Sunday. Back to you in the commentary box. Thanks, Ted. Yes, that will be a big concern for the teams. I'm just glad I'm up here in the air-conditioned comfort. You're right there, James, as Max puts in a 31.7, which puts him to the top of the leaderboard. Good start. Three tenths up on, uh, on my main championship rival, Alonso. But the times are much, much closer around here than compared to Bahrain, which means less room for mistakes. Let's see if I can continue my good form in qualifying. We're in Sepang, Malaysia, for another scintillating hour of Formula One qualifying. Everything is ready, so without further ado, let's get on with session one. Max is on a stonking lap here. Christian Clear, Jacques Villeneuve, Fernando Alonso, Giancarlo Fisichella, Juan Pablo Montoya, Michael Schumacher, Felipe Massa, Ralph Schumacher, Piano Trulli, Nico Rosberg, Jensen Button. James, while you were reeling off names there in a rather pointless manner, Verstappen just went and shaved four tenths off his best time which will comfortably see him through to Q2. So half a second over Alonso at the end of Q1. Uh, last time out in uh, Bahrain after Q1, I was 1.5 seconds ahead. Much tighter here. Bring it on. We'll continue in a few moments with the second knockout session, where we'll decide grid positions 16 to 11. Session two is about to get underway. We've reset the clocks as the times from session one are now irrelevant. And we've also cut the number of cars down from 22 to 16. By the end of this session, we'll be down to 10 contenders, all battling it out in a shootout session for pole position. Verstappen has just gone under the 32 barrier first time out. I think that will be enough to see him through to Q3. Ha! Only needed the one lap there. Still half a second gap, but now to Montoya. I'm losing a lot of time through the middle sector, but destroying them in the last sector by over a second. Uh, let's see what I can do in Q3 with a heavy fuel load. We'll continue with session three of qualifying in a few moments. Verstappen comes over the line now to set the benchmark. It's a 34.2. That won't be enough. Fisichella is currently on a better lap. He comes over the line now and improves by four tenths over Verstappen. Hello, Alonso. Felipe Massa, Rubens Barrichello, Juan Pablo Montoya, Jano Trulli, Kimi Raikkonen are all out on hot laps as I speak. Results should be coming in thick and fast throughout the session. And speaking of thick and fast, Verstappen improves on Fisichella's time by two tenths. Michael Schumacher is on a flyer. He comes over the line now and improves on Verstappen's time. Here comes Verstappen, can he respond? Yes, he can by just three one hundredths of a second. Now Schumacher wrestles back provisional pole by just two one hundredths. What can Max do here to respond? He's a bit scrappy through the exit there. 
Oh no, he's wide. And he's looped it. Are we seeing the pressure get to Max here? He still has plenty of time to respond. Let's see what he's got left in him. He's up through the second split. Here comes Max Verstappen. What can he do? He smashes Schumacher's time by half a second. Great stuff. What a fantastic battle we have going on here. And Verstappen clearly isn't done yet. He's still improving on this lap. And that's another two tenths quicker. He's surely locked in pole position with that lap. Uh, we're getting reports of a Honda going slowly. It's Button! His engine has let go in a big way and that's his qualifying session done. That's a shame, but he'll still start 10th because this game doesn't enforce engine penalties. Well, that was much tougher than last weekend. It was a lot of fun trading times with, with, uh, with Michael Schumacher and, and actually having to uh, battle him uh, during Q3. But once I hooked up all the sectors, I was able to pull out a comfortable gap. The surprise of qualifying has to be Jarno truly qualifying in third place. A good response after Toyota's dismal race last weekend. Now it's time to convert this pole into another race win. So there we have it. From 10th to pole, the grid order looks like this. We've enjoyed it. Hope you have too. We'll see you tomorrow for race day. Goodbye. Here we are again in stunning Kuala Lumpur, the location of the Malaysian Grand Prix. Sipang on the outskirts of the capital was designed to be a great challenge for the drivers with wide sweeping bends, high speed sections and tighter corners to create overtaking opportunities. The Malaysian Grand Prix is one of the most physically demanding events on the F1 calendar. Conditions are just about perfect here today. Clear skies and perfect temperatures on and off the track. The forecast is also good and we expect it to stay like this for the whole race. You have pole. This is a great chance for him to grab some points. Second on the grid is Michael Schumacher. Third is Jano Trulli. Giancarlo Fisichella completes row two. Fifth is Fernando Alonso. Felipe Massa takes sixth. Seventh place for Juan Pablo Montoya. Rubens Barrichello completes row four. Don't go anywhere. Turn up the volume and enjoy. Here we go. to separate them as they hurtle towards turn one. Max is slow there after turn two. Schumacher has a run on him here. Max is going very defensive. Oh no! Fisichella has gone straight into the back of Verstappen. Ah, uh, Fisichella is out! But it looks like Verstappen can continue. But he has damage to his left rear tyre. Fuck. Fuck's sake, what the fuck was that? Well, that, that's my race completely fucked. What was Fisichella thinking, honestly? Well, that was a frantic first few corners. Let's take a look at the replay. Max got a decent getaway there and went defensive to cover off Schumacher. Everyone was well behaved off the line and into turn one. It was around turn two where he went a bit deep and this left him vulnerable on the run up to turn three. Max was unusually slow into the braking zone, but it looks as though Fisichella has just driven straight into the back of him. We need to see an onboard from Fisichella's point of view. It looks as though he just wasn't paying attention. Very bizarre from someone as experienced as Fisichella. Verstappen is coming down pit lane. It looks as though it's just a puncture. The mechanics on the left rear have given it the all clear and he's on his way. What a shit race. I'm about to be lapped by Schumacher. Well, we were hoping this would be the battle for the lead. But unfortunately, due to a first lap incident, 
The man who started on pole is about to be lapped by the man who started in second. What a shame. I was really looking forward to seeing a fight between the master and the apprentice today. Well, it's gone from bad to worse for Max. He's having a race to forget today. Um, I'd like to put this race in the bin now. Keep an eye on your car condition indicator. The tyres are showing signs of wear in this Willenbeck grip. My team has fueled me to the end of the race. But this track is, is, is so hard on tyres. Um, and it's so easy to spin here. I'm going to two-stop. This is basically a test session now. Okay, the crew is ready for you. Hit this lap. Verstappen is in again, just for tyres this time. Thanks, Ted. We're at two-thirds race distance. Trulli leads. Next is Ralph Schumacher. Third is Cooper. Fourth, Michael Schumacher. He's moved up from sixth. Weber is fifth. Speed is sixth. Alonso, seventh. He's down from fifth. And in eighth place is Juan Pablo Montoya. Take it easy while the tires are blue. Or grip. They'll soon heat up and turn green on the indicator. We're getting reports of a double retirement. It's Rosberg and Felipe Massa, both out with engine failures. You're in 20 We're still a long way to go in this Grand Prix. I wonder who else is marginal on engine temps. Uh, we've got some more replays of the first lap incident. Oh, dearie me. Heidfeld has driven into and collected Fisichella's front right tyre. Last week, he drove straight into Trulli's rear wing. I wonder what he'll hit next weekend. Ah, indeed, Martin. Now we're on board with Sato. Oh, my goodness! The tyre has hit him flush on the helmet. Sato should consider himself very lucky there. Incidents like this highlight the dangers of open wheel racing. Your tyres are reading green on the condition indicator. You should have optimum grip levels now. Is that smoke coming from Alonso's exhaust? It is. His engine has given up. I can see it from our commentary box window. Oh, what a disaster for the Renault team. A double DNF. I'll say is that is karma for your teammate taking me out. 0.3 seconds past that to the third sector. Excellent lap time. That is the fastest lap of the race so far. Michael Schumacher powers across the line to take top spot on the podium. Montoya will finish in P2. And Jano truly comes home in third place for Toyota. What a superb performance from him. The Sepang International Circuit has again been a wonderful venue for Formula One racing. It's typical of the Hermann Tilke circuits of the modern era. It's been on the Formula One calendar since 1999, and it's maturing very nicely as the drivers and teams get used to that sharp turn one and the extended long straights. Very technical in sections with sweeping left and right bends that have the weight shifting around the car. It's always exciting to watch an F1 car driven in anger around here. We've enjoyed it, we hope you have too. We'll see you in two weeks time in Australia at Albert Park for round three. Until then, take care. Not much to say really, it was exciting for, for three corners, but went to shit when Fisichella decided to go full torpedo on me. I got really lucky with both uh, Alonso and Ed Massa retiring, so that limited the damage in the Drivers' Championship. So now I'm in third and still only three points behind Schumacher in first. Um, the Constructors looks a little worse. You know, we're sitting in fourth position with 10 points and nine points behind the leaders, Ferrari. But I'm not going to give up on this championship, even if I have to do it all myself. Let's see what management have to say about my weekend. Good race, Max. Um, you were very competitive in the weekend's uh, Malaysian Grand Prix. Uh, you showed that you are truly worthy um, of your seat as, as first driver here at Scuderia Toro Rosso. Nice job, Max. Well, I wasn't expecting it to be so positive, but I guess putting it on pole counts for a lot, yeah. I am looking forward to uh, next week's race at Australia. I've put in thousands of laps around there and, and expect to get my season back on track around the streets of Melbourne. Uh, thank you for tuning in again and see you next time. Oh,
Thank you.